I'd just like to wish you luck. I, I, I know you'd do the same for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Whoa! This is what's called the Black Friday Reel, a story reel for the original Toy Story shown to Disney execs on Black Friday of 1993. It is considered internally to be one of the darkest moments in Pixar's history. It shut down production on the original Toy Story, it changed the entire culture in which Pixar would develop their movies. It was a disaster. I recently went back and rewatched the original Toy Story as well as most of Pixar's catalog and I couldn't shake the thought of that Black Friday reel. And slowly, as I made my way film to film, something dawned on me. Pixar learned a lot by turning Woody into an abomination. Cowboy, where is your honor, dirtbag? You are an absolute disgrace. You don't deserve to wear a 10-gallon hat on your pint-sized head. It's important to understand the context of all this. Pixar signed a three-picture deal with Disney in order to create films around an unproven technology, computer-generated animation. Pixar got the movie deal based solely on their work with technology, not their writing or storytelling prowess. So now, Pixar was tasked with creating a film from scratch in a format that had never been used for a full feature film of any success. So what was essentially a tech firm with animators and writers on staff were now drafting a script for a movie named Toy Story. Their goal? To be more than the technology, to create something timeless that extends beyond the initial appeal of aesthetic innovation. And it started and nearly ended with a struggle to figure out what that meant. And out came this. Slaygate! Get up here and do your job! Are you deaf? I said take care of them! Uh, I'm sorry, Woody, but uh, I, I have to agree with them. I don't think what you did was uh, right. What? Am I hearing correctly? You don't think? The Black Friday reel was brought to Disney execs as a traditional check-in. Films like Toy Story need to be greenlit and approved at various stages of production. Thus was the agreement of the Disney-Pixar distribution at the time. Lasseter and the story team were struggling specifically with understanding their own characters. Woody in the reel, well, watch for yourself. Your job was to think, Spring Wiener. Well, I, I just just thought use that you... this vast oh. reserve of brain power to consider this for a moment. If it wasn't for me, Andy wouldn't pay any attention to you at all. In fact, my sketchy friend, you would have been hauled away to Goodwill a long time ago, so shut your mouth and get them off the bed. Believe it or not, this was already after redesign. Originally, Woody was set to be a ventriloquist dummy and a more traditional villain. That character design wasn't functional, so this version of Woody was built. He is vapid in his cruelty, a true nemesis in Andy's room, his push of buzz being back with intent. Woody here is the character that you'd get if you stripped all of the humanity, ironically, out of the Woody you know and recognize today. And maybe worst of all, this version of Woody in a very creepy fashion abuses the vocal talents of Tom Hanks. Hank's voice is already ambiguous at best in terms of intent when in the Woody character, but here, it's downright maniacal. If you were a kid and heard this bellowing at you on a screen, do it. Now, Slank, or I'm throwing you off! You'd be scared. This version of Woody doesn't disarm the villainy in the voice with emotion like the final version would. And everyone that watched it hated it. This was a version written by John Lasseter, Joss Whedon, and Joel Cohen, absolute masters of storytelling, and the Disney execs saw the reel and shut everything down. Production halted. Pixar was told the character was not just unlikable, but insufferable, and this version of the movie could not and would not exist. He was the traditional villainous archetype, and they were given a week to rewrite the film. And in that week, Pixar not only changed Woody, but changed Pixar. See, the idea behind the Woody you recognize was to pair your traditional animated hero with a more cynical and mature attitude. He was realistically layered. The fear with this approach early on for any studio, however, is and was that that layering would be lost on kids, and the more complex you make an animated character, the less likely kids are to become attached to them or even understand them. 
The Black Friday Woody is dark and subversive, but kids can immediately identify him as a villain, and thus an audience would have an easier time identifying Buzz as his foil and attaching themselves to him. Essentially, Black Friday Woody is the easy way out. He launches Buzz out the window, and from there every insult, slant, and moment of bullying seems axiomatically in character. But it sucked. So, Pixar took a chance and visualized Woody like this. They took that cynicism and placed it down here, but they piled on top of that two very important attributes, redeemability and innocence. If Woody pushes Buzz out of the window without remorse, it's over for his character. He is lost in the eyes of the audience, but if you show Woody's innocence, suddenly, no matter how narcissistic and jealous he becomes, you, the audience, are rooting for him because you know what the toys don't. He didn't do it. Pixar learned something very simple. You have to appeal to emotion instead of creating caricatures. That the tropes of the past were there for simplicity's sake, but if you were going to complicate it, you had to do so maturely. You had to look at your characters through a different kind of lens. Toy Story became a story about redemption. In the process, reimagining Woody as a person, Pixar developed an understanding that there is no such thing as a hero or a villain. There are only people, and that reality was universal, regardless of age. Consider this. Does Disney Animation's Frozen have a villain? Of course. It's this guy. Moana? Here you go. Zootopia? Yup. Shrek? Of course. But let's look at Pixar's catalog. Who is the villain of Inside Out? Who is the villain of Wall-E? There aren't any, really. And even if we look at Up or Finding Nemo or even Monsters, Inc., we see a pattern. Pixar began to tell stories that either didn't include the traditional animation trope of hero versus villain at all, or they made the villains so inconsequential to the story being told that their existence becomes more of a narrative tool than anything else. Randall is not the obstacle to be overcome in Monsters, Inc. Instead, it's acceptance and understanding that are the main obstacles of the only characters in the nuance, Mike, Sully, and Boo. Remy's foil is a food critic, but he isn't a villain so much as he is a standard that Remy's place in the kitchen has to meet. And even when a film does fall into these tropes, like The Incredibles, villain doesn't meet your typical standard of animated villainy. He's flawed, insecure, and in some ways, sad and relatable. Something you can't say about Scar, or Jafar, or so many of the villains that had come before. With one nightmarish version of their first character, Pixar began to create for everyone. It stopped seeing the world through the animated lens of hero versus villain. It trusted its writers to elevate animation beyond the height requirement of a carnival ride and to meet everyone at eye level, regardless of where you were at in life, by giving viewers the chance to pick their own villains and heroes. And if Woody isn't the best of both of those worlds, I'm not sure what character is. The Black Friday Reel is an important moment in both Pixar and animation's history. It taught a studio that sometimes you have to fail to succeed. Something that Pixar's Ed Catmull would eventually sum up by saying that what they've learned from moments like the Black Friday Reel is that all of their movies suck to begin with. Their job is to take it from something that sucks to something that doesn't suck. That's the hard part. And yet, it seems Pixar did take that literally. Lightning McQueen sucked until he didn't. Woody, the same. Flick, Merida, Carl, Fredrickson. Pixar learned that everyone is flawed, but everyone can be redeemed. It's a very rosy position to take in today's world, but they seem to believe that there's good in us all. Pixar's oldest and truest message, at least to me, is that the difference isn't whether or not we push Buzz off the ledge. The difference is who we become after he falls. Hey, Buzz! You're flying! This isn't flying. This is falling with style. <laughs> to infinity and beyond! Reach for the sky! That is a wrap on today's episode of Nerdstalgic. The Black Friday Reel is one of the most interesting moments in Pixar's history, 
in my opinion, so I couldn't wait to talk about it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to press that like button down below. And if you haven't yet done so, press subscribe. That way you won't miss a single episode of Nerdstalgic. Also, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. It just makes sure you're actually notified when I upload. That way you'll never have to worry about missing an episode. So yeah, hit subscribe and that little bell. And as always, on your screen right now are two more episodes of Nerdstalgic. You can click on either of those to see more from this channel. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.